How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and people, and teachers, and others? I'm Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business, and our business concerns itself with the case of the can which did not collapse. You remember on the last program, we had a big cylindrical vessel, chamber, and we had some water in it, and we boiled the water, and then we plugged it up here, and then we poured cold water on, and it did not go, as we say. However, after we had concluded the program, we noticed a slight uh, yielding of the wall. We hope that this is what we hope for. So we are going to do it again. We are heating the water in here, and after a bit I'll go out there and we'll try it once again, because I do not like to, uh, what shall I say, have things fail. Now you know my philosophy. It is important that we subscribe to the requirements of nature. While, while the water is cooking, let's consider another thing. You know that if we have uh, a surface which is reflecting, and we have, uh, say, uh, some energy incident this way, like a ray of light, and we draw a perpendicular to that surface, there is reflection so such that that angle is equal to that. This is called the angle of incidence, this is the angle of reflection. Now, light energy behaves according to this law, and we have an instrument to show you that. Consider the following. Here is a highly reflecting metal plate. Here is an incandescent lamp, which I'll just show you quickly. And here is an array of thermocouple junctions. Thermocouple junctions, called a thermopile. See it? Thermo pile, a pile of thermocouples. Got that? Now, we are going to put some radiation energy from this lamp on this plate. It will suffer some reflection according to this law. This thermopile will pick up the radiation, electromagnetic, convert it to thermal energy, and here we have a zero center meter, which I hope shows when I have made the right angle the correct angle equal to the correct angle. Watch it now. Uh, we'll just have to see this and then the meter. Oh, I don't know how you'll do it, but we need to see the meter too. Watch it. I'm bringing it in. I'm bringing it in. I'm, I can't tell when the meter is reading. Is it reading? Yes, yes. Now watch. I'm going to go away from that angle. And now it's coming back. Now it's coming back. So, a wonderful demonstration. There is a best angle. There is a best angle. Now, let's do it all over again. And this time, intercept the energy, not with a shiny reflecting surface, but a highly absorbing one, a black piece of paper. Let me come back to the angle which gives us the best uh, energy received by the meter. I can't tell, I have to see the meter. Is that it? All right, now I'm going to interpose that piece of paper. Watch the needle now. Watch the needle now. Do you see it's going back? It's going back. Showing that very little energy is being uh, uh, reflected. Very good. That tank out there is boiling now beautifully. Let's try it. Because I feel like Otto von Guericke making a demonstration. Josh, can you switch the yes, but don't switch it off yet. Now switch it off. Plug it up. Marke schnell. If we lose any More tight. Whoop, watch it. Anderson is going to be drowned. Easy. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Let me hear. Oh, the water's boiling feverishly inside. 
The pressure is very low. But it appears again that this tank is too firmly reinforced with those ribs, those circular ribs, Anderson, and it will not go. No, we are lost. <laughs> Anderson is resorting to some ice. We are in desperation and in despair. If it does go, we'll get drowned. Nature has thwarted us again. Yeah, let us abandon it, Anderson. It is too bad, but I had hoped to see it. And I'm reminded that I tried to do this in Uppsala, Sweden with a huge tank made of Swedish steel and it would not go. So I said, uh, Swedish steel is too uh, much for us. So, a little now aside. Problem. It went. It went. Ho, ho. It went. Ho, oh, ho, oh, man. Oh, it went. <laughs> it went. Ho, oh, ho, ho. Oh, mamma mia. Did it go? Oh, did it go? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. No. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we did that right up smart, didn't we? <laughs> Beautiful. I had given it up. I had given it up. Was this caught on camera? Was it? Well, you were on it. Oh, mamma mia. I am ready to dance for joy. Huh? Faith in physics. Yep, that's it. Faith in physics. Oh, that was wonderful. Phew. Man. Oh, this is going. Oh, mother of mine. This is. Oh. Now, when I get my composure, people, we can return to the program. My great regret is, of course, that I didn't see it. Oh, I missed that. We shall have to do it again. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, uh, consider the following. A little exercise for you to think about. I have a vessel, not a square edge like that, a vessel, in which I have put some mercury. 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 I will now put a steel ball in that mercury. Specific gravity of mercury, 13.6. Specific gravity of iron, roughly 8. Accordingly, the ball will float with about 8 thirteenths submerged. Show you that. <clears throat> mercury, I'll turn the dish up so the camera can get it, and I'm going to float the ball in the mercury. There it is, floating. Steel floating in mercury. Incredible. You know, if you were to submerge yourself in a bath of mercury for the purpose of swimming, you'd be absolutely on the top of it. Yeah, better than swimming in the Great Salt Lake. Now, what is my question, which you can think about? Supposing I pour some water on top of the mercury, you know it will reside on top of the mercury, and supposing I inundate the ball with some water resting on top of the mercury. Question, will the ball sink or will it come up some? And that is a very good question for students at all levels. And I thank you for watching.